Now we're going to look at tools, how you can add tools to large language models through agents in LangChain to give them access to capabilities that they might need from, from beyond their large language model, um, the foundation model. So tools, what is a tool? Tool are very useful things that the agents can make use of, like a calculator. The large language model is not that good at mathematics by itself, especially very large numbers. You'll often when I have it multiply like some number in the thousands by another number in the thousands and I get this big, big long number. The first part of it is correct, but the, the least significant digits tend to be, tend to be off somewhat, mainly because it's, it's just using the body of, of human knowledge that was put into the foundation model. It's using that to really help it to, uh, to, to figure out what it thinks the answer to that mathematics might be. You can also give it access to a Python compiler. This can be very useful because you're potentially, it's generating Python code for you. So it can actually try and see what it does. Or you may ask it to do something where, I, where you, it would be hard for it to just know what the answer is, but it knows how to write a Python program that could quickly do all the calculations that you're asking it to do. So let's have a look at tools. There are a, a variety of, first of all, there's also tools and toolkits. In Langchain, tools are the very individual kind of atomic tools that you would use, and then toolkits are collections of those. Let's just look at the tools that are available, because there's there's some very useful ones here. You can see there's Bing search, there's Brave search, there's DuckDuckGo, ExaSearch, there's lots of searches. Uh, there's code interpreters, and there's more and more of these coming. And these can be very useful. These are potentially an area that, I'll, that I see probably in the future we're gonna have some security concerns with, because certainly you're letting the large language model actually execute Python code that it's created. I mean, this sounds maybe like a Skynet scenario, but that's not more what I'm concerned about, uh, the, the AI becoming self-aware and writing its own Python code to conquer the world. But there is the possibility that malicious actors may confuse, black hats may confuse the large language models into writing Python code that has, that has issues. So there's, there's ones for accessing GitHub, GitLab, all these kind of things. There's web browsing ones, database capabilities, and then just a list of all the tools together. Companies very much would want to use tools to do sort of RPA, robotic process automation tasks, because you could have the agent be able to go out and do something to one of your systems. Math is one of the key areas because, like I said before, large language models are just not that good at math. It's kind of like having humans do math in their head, certainly. So here we are going to see how to get this to, um, to do some basic mathematics. So here I am creating the GPT-40 Mini. We use Mini in a lot of the... the uh, classes that we have in this course. And here I'm just basically doing a calculation. I'm multiplying these two numbers in the thousands. And we are looking at basically what did the large language model give me versus Python actually calculating. And you'll see that these two numbers, the most significant digits were certainly on target, but there were some errors. So it was off by about 9,700. That's when you're having the large language model do the math completely in its head. Now, it doing the math in its head, so to speak, is much certainly better than what I would have done doing the math in, in their head. One semester, when I did give an example of this, more neural networks calculating, I did have one student who had that fantastic ability where they're like a human calculator, and I, I gave a, a calculation like that, and they rattled off the, the answer. I was, I was quite amazed um, with with that. So here you can use the Python REPL. This is a calculator, but so, so much more. It can execute Python code, so you could do tri trig functions, all kinds of things. And here I'm basically running the Python REPL, and it does warn me that this is experimental code in LangChain. 
So be careful with that because certainly you're executing Python code that the large language model is generating. Potential security concerns there for sure. So there I, I simply executed the Python here. I'm calling it, it's not the large language model creating the Python code and it, it prints out the result. Now what I'm going to do is basically give it access to the Python REPL. I'm creating this little tool header. You do this whenever you provide a tool. So you give it a name and then you explain what the tool is. You got to give the large language model usage instructions so that it knows how to use the tool. Otherwise, it's, it's going to fail. And we're using that same functions calling agent that we've used before. And now I ask it this. And you can see it's, it's answering the same question and it gives me a proper result because it actually made use of, of the tool because it says invoking Python REPL. We can also create our own custom tools. And like I said, this is something you tend to do a lot in corporate situations. So here I am creating it. I am creating a safe calculator. So this is a calculator that will only do math and not Python. And I, use, I basically use uh, the, the Python eval and, um, and do that calculation. This is not completely safe, but it's, it's safer than the general purpose Python REPL. Here I get the expression that was passed in and we perform the calculator calculate and we return the value. Here you can see that I uh, make use of it. I need to modify that so that it, you're not putting your own key into there. We can remove that and it, it'll, simply, uh, it'll simply get it from the, the keys. And then you're able to see that it gives you the results. I used to have, you used to have to put the key in, in a lot of different locations, but that's, that's actually not a bad practice. Make sure it's in the keys. I will modify that so that it, the code uses the correct technique there. And here I am able to call it with this and you can see that we get the, we get the, the result from using the proper, the proper tool. And it's using our tool rather than the very general purpose tool that can call anything in Python. Well, thank you for watching the video, and if this was useful, please uh, subscribe to the channel and give me a like so that you don't miss anything coming up from future videos, either for this class or for other things that I do on machine learning.